Hi everyone, I am Laila Hussain. I am doing my PhD in Biopria. Today I am going to show you an excellent material which is called super absorbent made from nanocellulose fiber. This material can absorb a large volume of water, typically a few hundred times of its own dry weight. Here in Biopria, we develop this material for varieties of application such as for food, biomedical or agricultural application. In this video, we are going to show you how we produce nanocellulose fiber from cellulose pulp. We produce nanocellulose fiber from cellulose pulp in two steps. First, tempo oxidation and second, homogenization. Tempo mediated oxidation selectively oxidizes the primary hydroxyl group to carboxylic group. Here, tempo acts as catalyst while sodium bromide and sodium hypochlorite act as oxidizing agent. Secondly, in the homogenization, we pass the fiber suspension, oxidized fiber suspension, through the homogenizer. In the homogenizer, there is a small orifice. When the fiber suspension passes through that orifice at 1000 bar, the fibers get fibrillated and as a result, we get nanocellulose gel. Here I am going to show you how we do tempo mediated oxidation of cellulose fiber. So this is our setup for the oxidation reaction. Here we need 5 liter beaker with 800 ml water, overhead stirrer and pH meter to maintain the pH throughout the reaction. For this experiment we need bleached eucalyptus craft pulp, tempo, sodium bromide, sodium hypochlorite and sodium hydroxide. First, we will need to dissolve 0.4 gram tempo in around 800 ml of water. While we wait for it to dissolve, we can prepare the BK slurry. We will suspend 100 gram of BK in 2 liter of water and mix it using hand mixture. We will then disintegrate this at 12,000 revolution per minute. We can now add 2.5 gram sodium bromide. Now we will add the BK suspension in the tempo solution. We'll just allow all components to mix. Now we are ready to start the oxidation reaction by adding 75 ml of sodium hypochlorite dropwise. This reaction takes around 2 hours. We need to maintain the pH at 10 by adding 0.5 molar sodium hydroxide. After 2 hours, we can now isolate the oxidized fibers by vacuum filtration. We will wash the fibers with copious amounts of water until the filters become neutral. And this is our tempo oxidized BK pulp. We need to take a few grams of the fibers to quantify its solid content. We normally do this by gravimetric analysis, that is by taking the mass of fibers before and after oven drying overnight. Now that we have the oxidized fiber, we are ready to do homogenization at 1000 bar. Typically, homogenizers are used to prepare emulsion, including your favorite ice cream. However, in this activity, we are going to use homogenizer to fibrillate this cellulose pulp into nano-sized smaller cellulose fibers. We will slowly increase the pressure of the homogenizer. In the first stage, we will increase the pressure to about 80 bar. In the second stage, we will slowly increase the pressure to about 800 bar. Make sure that there is water flushing into the homogenizer. Before the water runs out, we prepare the cellulose suspension and immediately pour it in the homogenizer. Make sure to keep on stirring as we pour in the cellulose suspension. Now we collect our nanocellulose gel. In this activity, we are going to investigate the effect of number of passes in the degree of fibrillation of nanocellulose. 
We are going to pass these gels again in the homogenizer. Here you can see our beautiful tempo oxidized homogenized nanocellulose hydrogel. As you can see, they are optically transparent. Now we are going to compare the degree of fibrillation using EVBs. This graph here is showing you the transmittency of two nanocellulose hydrogel, one pass and two pass. As you can see in the graph, the green line is indicating two pass nanocellulose gel and the purple line is indicating one pass nanocellulose gel. As you can see, the green line is showing higher transmittency compared to the purple line. This is because the green line 2 pass nanocellulose hydrogel has got more fibrillation compared to 1 pass nanocellulose hydrogel. From here, we can conclude that when we are getting more fibrillation, the gel is becoming more transparent.